Shemai, Yashar Allah, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, Lahud, Shemai, Yashar Allah, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, Lahud, Brakat the Yahawa, Brakat the Yahushai, Brakat the Yahawa, Brakat the Yahushai, Kohalayim La Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahushai, Bahashim, Rahaha Kodash, Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Kazakh Shalom. To the whole full leg, scattered across the four corners of the planet Earth. It's your brother Zariah Allah down here at the GMS Virginia camp. Back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> this lesson is going into uh, nationality, all right? Because uh, a part of being in this truth, man, you have to know your, your, your true nationality, man. When you, when you hear this word, you have to do some digging, you have to do some research, and you have to figure out out of the 18 nations in the Bible, right, what nation do you come from? All right. And if you of the, you know, tribe of Israel, all right, which is the special, I mean, the nation of Israel, Salakia, so like then you want to figure out, you know, what tribe you come from. If if not, you can't, then, hey, Lord willing, you know, in the kingdom, we'll figure that out. All right. But without further ado, uh, before I get into the scripture, I just want to get a nationality. OK, because the Lord has created nations. He have not created uh, what people say, the so-called white people and things of that nature. All right. So when you go to nation, all right, it says a race of people, a large group of people with common ancestry and language. OK, it says birth, rank, descendants, relatives. Right. It says uh, birth, origin, breed, stock, kind of species, a race of people, tribe, literally that which has been born. OK, so meaning that you came out of the seed of a man. OK, and you were uh, born. Right. You had birth and you came out of uh, uh, your, your mother's uh, wounds. OK, so it says give birth. It says beget. OK, now when you go into the genealogy of Yahweh Shai, when you read in the Matthew, the first chapter. All right. Or Luke. Uh, I want to say Luke, the third chapter or fourth chapter, if I'm not mistaken, it goes into Yahweh Shai's uh, genealogy. It goes into, you know, all the way down from, you know, King David and so on and so forth. And then even goes further than that, all the way back to uh, our facts have Shem, uh, Peleg, Eber, and so on and so forth, man. All right. So uh, going into that uh, nation, right, as as we read, it says to beget because it says he beget this and he beget that. Matter of fact, I'll just get it just so you can kind of get a clear picture of what I'm trying to say. Let's go to Matthew chapter one all right and it says this matthew 101 it says the book of the generations of yahweh shahamashiach the son of david the son of abraham all right and generation that goes into what genealogy goes into to to records all right because this is the the birth records of the 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 uh the uh, fathers of Yahweh Shahamashiach, so his great 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 grandfather, his uh, his ancestors, and so on and so forth, man, out of the tribe of what? The tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel, which happens to be Yashar Allah in the uh, Paleo Hebrew, all right? So, as you can see right here, it says the book of the generation of Yahweh Shahamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. It says, Abraham beget Isaac, Isaac beget Jacob, and Jacob beget Judas and his brethren. All right, and that consists of the 12 tribes because what is very important is that what a lot of people like to go into the fact that oh well uh Esau he uh he was born of of Isaac all right he, he uh Isaac and um so like uh Jacob and, and Esau were brothers so wouldn't that make uh Esau a uh a, a Israelite no 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 this is why you have to get the history to understand the mystery all right now let's go to that and get that account all right so you have genesis chapter 25 and uh i started verse 21 it says and isaac entreated the lord yahweh for his wife okay going into rebecca because she was barren meaning she couldn't have children and the lord was entreated of him and rebecca his wife conceived Meaning what? That Isaac and Rebecca had sex and she conceived, okay, meaning she got pregnant, okay? Because that seed, uh, the, the, the semen was uh, was uh, sprung into her, which caused the, 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 uh, the uh, egg, you know, and the, um, and the uh, fertilizer of the, of the sperm turning it in, into a, a baby, okay? 
turn it into a small little cell, if you will. All right. And it says verse 22 and the children. Right. Because it was uh, it was multiple. It says children struggle together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire the Lord. Right. Because she was struggling, man. Uh, you had two children that was in, in her in her body, man. All right. She was having, you know, uh, pregnancy pains, hormones, all those things that, you know, the woman have today, if not more. All right. Verse 23, it says, and the Lord said unto her two nations. Right. We just went into the etymology with uh, nations it means it goes into incest, ancestor. OK, birth. OK, origin, you know, things of that nature. Right. It says two nations are in thy womb. Two men of a people shall be separated from thy bowels. All right. So the Lord, okay, th this is a, a certain type of conflict. So the Lord can do what he wants to do. He created two nations, all right, in this, uh, in Rebecca's womb. He created two nations, all right, because he can do that, right? And it says, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger, all right? The stronger people that's going into Jacob. Because when you see Jake, all right, through our sports and music, we end up being stronger, better, faster, more talented, because what? We have that salt, all right? And it says the elder shall serve the younger, because soon they're going to be our slaves, man. All right? And verse 24 says, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau, which means I, uh, I Shashua, which means uh, wasted away is he. All right, in verse 26, it says, and after that, his brother out, after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them, okay? So, uh, going into that, all right, uh, Esau ended up being, what, the firstborn, all right? And, he, and Jacob came right after uh, Esau. Because it said the elder shall serve the younger, meaning Esau is older and, and Jacob is the youngest. So the the blessing and everything like that is going to go to Jacob. All right. Now, let's uh, continue on as far as concerning the nations, man. All right? Because now we get the, the whole the matter of the whole, you know, what Esau and what uh, Jacob was. OK. And for um for a better explanation, Esau all right, is a Hebrew Edomite. OK. He's an Edomite. Okay, let's get that scripture where it says Esau is Edom. Okay. Genesis 36 and 1. Now, these are the generations of what? Of Esau, who is Edom. Okay, so that lets you know that Esau, all right, is, e is Edom. Okay, the, the nation of Edom, which happens to be what? The so-called white people. All right. And this is what the so-called white people do, man. These these wicked elites, they hide behind their true biblical nationality, and they label themselves as white, as the the ish people. They label themselves as all these other different, you know, meanings instead of their true nationality, which is uh Esau Edom. Okay, so um, let's get this uh next scripture. Okay, uh, and uh Salaki Jacob. Is a Hebrew Israelite because Hebrew just means a uh, tongue. Okay, uh, when you get that word uh, pay uh, Eber in uh, Genesis, all right, it means Ibar, which means the past. And why was his name Ibar? All right, because what he kept the the old uh, holy tongue. He kept the uh, old language. Okay, which happens to be what Hebrew. All right, Ibar, which is uh, Hebrew. All right, but then when you go into Genesis ten, okay. You go into Genesis 10, and what? It goes into the different, uh, the, the table of nations, if you will. All right? It says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. So after the Lord did the flood, all right, saved the eight souls. Okay, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And all the people that you see in today's world now come out of these three new lineages, all right? The nation of Israel comes out of uh, of a Shem, okay? Esau, Edom comes out of the line of Shem as well, all right? But like I said before, they are Hebrew Edomites, okay? Uh, because what? The Lord had created two nations in Rebekah's womb, all right? So, 
when you go down, right, because it goes into, you know, all the different nations, and it goes into him and so on and so forth, right? Come here it is, Genesis 10 and 25. It says, and unto Eber were born two sons, and one of his, and one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Okay, and like I said before, matter of fact, uh, we'll we'll get that. Hold on, that's Acts. I gotta remember that scripture. Salakia. I gotta remember that. I'm gonna just get it in a blue letter. Salakia. Genesis uh ten. Genesis ten verse twenty-five. Alright. It says, and unto Eber were born two sons. Now when you go into that word Eber, right? The Hebrew word is what? I bar, right? So it says the region beyond, right? It says, uh the name of two patriarchs and four Israelites, right? Let's see. Let's see if I can get the root. It says region beyond. So region. Let's look at the word region. Okay, not definition. I want beyond. see okay so beyond so when you think of something beyond you think of something uh in the past it says the beyond and now especially in reference to life after death message from beyond okay so beyond generations all right eber kept kept the language all right the 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 language of of what of Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, all right, because Adam he spoke the Lashawan Kodash when he named the animals that you see walking on the earth. All right, now let's get this word Peleg because I believe Peleg goes into something as well, if I'm not mistaken. Division, okay, so it says Palag, it says division, son of Eber, brother of Joktan, right? So it says, uh, and unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. All right? So now that you have Peleg and Joktan, right, that is a representation of what? Of a division, how the Lord is only dealing with one particular seed line, and he's going to deal with Peleg, okay, instead of Joktan. All right? Because right here it goes into, you know, Joktan and Ophir and so on and so forth, right? And then it goes into what? Verse 31, these are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, and after their lands, and after their nations. Okay? And it says, and these are the families of the sons of Noah, and after their generation, and their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. All right? Because the Lord wanted uh, a division, because he wanted to pull a special people unto himself. All right? Now, I believe it goes into the next chapter, how it goes into... uh. Um, Peleg. Let's see. Yeah, because this goes into the, the, the tower, how the Lord confounded everyone that was speaking Hebrew and, and turned them into their own, you know, language and the things that they were speaking. All right. Let's see. Okay, console. Yeah, so it goes into these other generations of Shem, verse 10. Goes into Shem, goes in our facts had two years after the flood. All right, and then let me see if I can find Eber. Okay, Khan, here goes Eber, right? And then it goes into what? Peleg, right? So it says, uh, Genesis 11 and 16, it says that Eber lived 40 and 30 years and beget Peleg, and Eber lived after he beget Peleg 430 years and beget sons and daughters, and Peleg lived 30 years and beget Ru. So it goes uh goes down into uh Peleg's uh, uh lineage, all right? So going down into Peleg goes into Nahor, Terra, and then what you have Terra going into what? Abram, all right, which his name was later uh going into uh Abraham, which means a, a father of many nations. Okay, because I believe Abram means uh exalted father. Let me see. Abram. 
Yeah, so Khan, so Abram, Abram, right? Because Abba is father and, and, and Rum, okay? Is, uh, is, uh, Quam is, is rise, but Rum together is, is uh, exalted. So you got Abram, which means exalted father, all right? And later his name was changed to what? Abraham, which means father of many nations, okay? Because what? What nation or did the Lord choose out of uh, Abraham's sons? Because I believe Abraham had eight sons. Okay, he had Ishmael, all right? He had Isaac, and he had, you know, those other sons. But what sea line did the Lord choose? Because the Lord always deals with a division in a specific nation, all right? And he ended up dealing with what? Isaac. And that's why when you see the scriptures, it says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right? Now I want to get, you know, the quick little point. In Acts the seventeenth chapter, all right. So this is Acts chapter twenty, uh, seventeen and verse twenty six. It says, actually, I started verse twenty five. It says, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he giveth to life to all life, breath, and all things. All right, who's the creator of all things? Yahweh. All right, he gave life, man. All right, he created Yahweh Shai and the angels, and then Yahweh Shai, you know, did the rest of the work. All right, the heavenly Father gave him the blueprint. All right, verse 26, it says, And have made one blood of all nations of man to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and bounds of their habitation. All right, so that goes in, you know, to Adam and the three classifications of man, all right, which happen to be the sons of man, the sons of the wicked, and the sons of God. All right, and before we were known as the nation of Israel, we were known as the sons of God, okay, the sons of power. But now we're known as what? The princes of power because when you break down the word uh, Israel, okay? Yashar, Allah, Yah as in he, Shar as in prince, Allah as in power, all right? So the Lord is only dealing with that specific nation, okay? That specific nation, all right? And it says he have made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation, man. All right, so the Lord made... You know, nations. He didn't create white people, black people, Chinese people, so on and so forth, man. All right. And I have a picture of the uh, nations. All right. So this is the table of nations and you have 18 of them. OK, you have Israel, Yasharala, which consists of the 12 tribes. And that's the so-called. And the reason why we say so-called, because those are the uh, the net, the, the quote unquote races or nationality that our conquerors gave us are right? the so-called Negroes, Latinos. Native Americans, Semio Indians, and so on and so forth, man. And then number two, as you can see, you have the so-called white man, all right, which really is the red man, all right, because they have a lack of uh, pigmentation. They have no melanin in their skin. They're the only nation on the planet Earth that has no melanin, all right? When you when you put them in the sun, they, their skin turns really red. They get real bad sunburn, all right? When, when it's... Uh, you seen after the whole thing with the whole Holocaust thing, what happened to their skin? And their skin turned what? Freaking uh, 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 purple, if you will, man. Or, or real uh, red, all right? It looked like dead people, man. All right, and you got India, okay? Elam, okay? The, the so-called East Indians. You got the Assyrians, okay? You got Syria, the Arabs, the Chinese, Japanese, so on and so forth, man. All right? And these goes into the, 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 the table of nations when you read in uh, Genesis, the 10th chapter, all right? But we're focused on what? The nation of Israel. All right, so now that we got the whole, you know, picture of that, I want to get the account where it spoke about how uh, Jacob had wrestled with the angel because Jacob's name is interchangeable with Israel. And that's why you will see throughout the scriptures or right, when it mentions uh, Jacob or Israel, it means the same thing. OK, Jacob is interchangeable with Israel. OK, because Jacob's name was later turned to Israel after he wrestled with the angel, which I believe. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, Khan, Genesis 35. All right.
Uh, I'll start at verse 39. It says, And the power appeared unto Jacob again. We came out of Pandarum and blessed him. Matter of fact, let's see. Okay, come on. It says, And I will appear unto Jacob again, and when he came out of Padanerim and blessed him, the power said unto him, Thy name is Jacob, thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name, and he called his name Israel. Okay, come on. That's not the one I want, it's Salakia. It's another one. Let's see. Salakia, bear with me. Con, here it is. This is the account. Genesis 32. All right. Um, and this is the account when uh Jacob was wrestling with the angel. All right. It says, uh, I'll start at verse 21. It says, Genesis 32 and chapter 21. It says, So went the present over before him and himself lost that night in the company. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and eleven sons and passed over to four Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. There wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of the day, man. So this was going on, I want to say, between the third and fourth watch. So the third and fourth watch is between, uh, I want to say, uh, 3 a.m. 3, 3 to 6 a.m. And then you have uh, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Right, so to from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. and then from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. All right, so between the third and fourth watch, man. So it says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he had prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint in his, and he as he wrestled with him, man. All right, so Jacob's thigh, uh, you know, had popped out, man. It, it came out of place, man. He But he was still holding on, wrestling with the angel, right? And it says, and he said, let me go for the day break. If he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. All right. So this is, you know, Jacob being Jake, man. He said, nah, I ain't let you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to uh, bless me, man. Because what does Jacob mean? It means Yaquab in the Hebrew, which means to supplant. Okay. Because Jacob is, is a supplanter. And that's the, you know, the the qualities that you see Jake having today, man. They always trying to finesse or, or, or get over on somebody, man. That's how Jake go. All right, so that that also lets you know that, that we are those uh, people, man. All right, verse 27, it says, And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Okay, Yaquab. And verse 28, it says, and He said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with Yahweh and with men, and has prevailed. All right, so it even breaks down the name, man. It says, For a prince has thou power. All right, so... Jacob, okay, being the, the patriarch or of the 12 tribes of, of Israel, okay, his name was later named, his name was later changed to what? To Israel, Yashar Allah, prince has thou power, okay, the princes of power, all right, that's what Israel means, the princes of power, okay, so the Lord dealt with this particular seed line, and just to back that up, and this all started from the beginning, man, all you have to do is go to uh, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, okay, in verse 7, it says, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, meaning many different genealogies, different uh, other nations, and, and so on and so forth, man. It says, ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee, okay, your elders, okay, the people that were, you know, before, born before you, the, uh, you know, their generation, our generation, so on and so forth, man. Verse 8, when the Most High, right, Yahweh, divided to the nations their inheritance man so the lord gave you know these other nations they own inheritance they own language they own customs and mannerisms and things of that nature they own false gods all right but we all know there's only one true god all right which is the most high yahweh all right and his son yahweh shai man all right so it says when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance when he separated what? The sons of Adam, man. So this all goes back to Adam. Okay, when I mentioned the three uh, classifications of man. Okay, the sons of Adam. All right, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds 
of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Because like I mentioned earlier, okay, at the time of, of, of the Garden of Eden, all right, when we were known as the sons of Adam, we were known as what? The sons of God, okay, the sons of power, all right? But then, you know, after all the, you know, the wickedness and we fell from our first uh, state, all right, which happens, you know, us going into from immortality to mortality, all right, after we went off and, you know, started dealing with the other gods and not serving uh, Yahweh, that's when you had what? You had the whole flood and you had, uh, you had, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, all these different, you know, uh, accounts where the Lord de destroyed, you know, the people, man, all right, but then what? He, he brought Abraham on the scene, then he brought Isaac, and then he brought Jacob, okay, to, to give us back that in, inheritance, those, those promises, right, so we can go back to our land, all right, and we fell from that as well, and this is why you have us here in, in captivity again in what? America, man. So throughout all, you know, history, all going back to Adam, man, all right, we fell as a nation, man, and now we're trying to, you know, get back, you know, to that power that we once had, man, going back to that immortality. All right, because soon these laws, sketch commandments are going to be written in our inward parts and we're not going to sin, meaning we're not going to die. OK, because the wages of sin is what? Death. All right. So verse eight, I'll read it again. It says when the most high divided to the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of children of Israel. All right. So what is bounds? Bounds is something like like a boundary. OK, so when you set a boundary, meaning someone can't, you know, cross that certain type of bound. All right. So the Lord set a, a boundary between us and these other nations, man. All right. The Lord made us holy and, and, and a special people, according to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, a special people unto himself. All right. To make to make us holy. And what made us holy? The law, statute, commandment. What differentiated us from the other nation? The law, statute, commandments and us serving the most high God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, man. All right. So the Lord is only dealing with nations. The Lord is not dealing with the so-called white people. The Lord created nations. And the only nation specific of who he is dealing with is the nation of Israel. And he ain't even dealing with all of Israel. He's only dealing with the elect. Okay, so it's all about the elect. But this is just a, you know, quick edification, you know, to prove, all right, that it, it, it doesn't matter, okay, what these damn devils say, man. We understand what nation, what stock that we come from. We know who our ancestors are. We know who our forefathers are, man, according to the scriptures, man. We know our biblical nationality, and we're proclaiming, proclaiming it, and we're teaching our people, letting them know, man, you're, hey, you come from a, a beautiful stock, man, Yashur Allah, all right? So with that, Lord, what in this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect scattered across the four corners of planet Earth. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha HaKodash. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Kazakh Shalom to the hopeful elect. Kwam Yasharala and Shalom.